younger, I used to read a popular feminist blog. The first thing I noticed was that it validated my pain in a lot of ways, but mostly it just triggered it. After reading articles about patriarchy and double standards and incessant violence against women, I would instinctually recall all the times that I had been mistreated, gaslit, and didn't even realize it was happening at the time. Without fail, these posts would stimulate the deep roots of victimhood within me. Before reading them, I'd feel normal, and after reading them, I'd feel triggered, defensive, and like I had to protect myself from every man I encountered. These women wrote about very real problems and cultural biases no one else cared to address or even notice, but still something felt off. There was surprisingly little mention of the very real civil rights violations still happening to women in poorer countries. Eventually, I stopped visiting this site. As a self-development junkie, I noticed it wasn't helping me improve, and I was thrown off by the amount of gossip and celebrity focus. Years later, and my distaste for pop culture feminism has only strengthened. Only now, I know why. A video by popular YouTuber Bridget Nielsen addressed society's obsession with keeping women in their maiden phase. I'll explain that in a minute, but this, I realized, was exactly it. What the media shares as women's empowerment is not empowerment. In fact, it disrespects and misinterprets femininity, whitewashing over it with a watered-down substitute. Now that I'm older and much harder to trigger about physical insecurities, I see it for what it is, which is deeply disturbing, deeply unnatural for young girls to be exposed to, and bad for society as a whole. So what is the maiden archetype and how does it relate to mainstream women's empowerment? So there are three Jungian archetypes often used to describe the life stages of a woman. The maiden, the mother, the crone. These are the three stages with the maiden being the youngest and least mature. The maiden is an independent, autonomous woman who doesn't answer to anyone. Embodied, this archetype appears to easily juggle a whole stack of projects and activities. She is stunningly confident in her skin. Sound familiar? Independent? Can do it all? Let's keep going. The maiden may not have the wisdom of age. She is fresh, new to experiences, and her energy holds a gentle naivety, which edges on foolhardy at times. The message you'll get from the media and its perpetual circus-like emphasis on the maiden is that women's power comes from appearance showing skin and being youthful, or modifying yourself to give the illusion of youth. To understand the extreme version of this problem, you can watch the exploitation of the maiden by the divine Venus. Even the most progressive mainstream movements like body positivity still have women completely absorbed in their bodies. It is also all about being outspoken, assertive, confident, tough, and being like a boss. If I had a dollar for every time I heard girl boss recently. But the funny thing is, these are all qualities of what? Empowered masculine. This is the upside of masculinity. Of all the feminine archetypes, the maiden may be the one embodying her masculine qualities most openly. So the question arises, what makes femininity valuable? Let's take a second to look at what femininity really is without the distortions. Femininity is literally the most powerful force on the planet. It creates life. It is innovation itself. This, frankly, is intimidating. The matured maiden becomes the protective mother who obliterates evil for the greater good. Her simple presence makes archaic, abusive systems impossible to maintain. She cannot help but pull the sleeping masses into higher consciousness with her humane commitment to truth. Empowered, balanced femininity is literally unstoppable. It cannot be mandated, contained, bridled, altered, or made synthetic. Unless, of course, you're a naive maiden who has yet to come into her full power. Femininity is the embodiment of intuition, which knows more than logic, without any concrete explanation as to how. In this sense, it is mysterious and scary to humanity. It is the vastness of all that is, and it exists in everyone, especially women. 
Real feminine qualities don't get you anywhere in the current system, particularly the work system. Think about the last time you saw any feminine traits whatsoever on a corporate job ad. Help wanted. Need someone who is receptive, creative, and nurturing to fill this high-paying role in which you will be valued for your natural talents. Everyone gets three days off for their period. Apply within. Similarly, try telling your coworkers that you came up with a plan intuitively based on a dream you had. Watch them proceed to laugh or uncomfortably change the subject. Corporate culture is allergic to mature femininity, as is mainstream media. And I wish I can tell you that this hasn't muddled the feminist movement, but I think it has. The problem is we're all in fight or flight, and there's nothing less feminine than wanting to rip someone's head off and feed it to them. This is no one's fault but it has made me relinquish feminist from the list of things I associate with. In doing so, I found that I've moved far away from victim mentality, no longer seething over the memories of mistreatment during my own disappointing maiden phase. Now all I see when I look back is the pain and ignorance of the men who mistreated me. This is not to say that women must dismiss that they were victimized. We can't stuff these emotions into the subconscious any longer. Please see the last several years of my content for proof that I do not teach suppression. It's also not to say that feminism wasn't necessary, because it was. If you don't believe me, just ask your mother or your grandmother about her past experiences with men and prepare to be stunned. Around the world, necessary things are still happening to secure basic human rights for women and the people leading those movements have every right to continue until they are safe. What I'm simply saying is that in my experience, once traumatic feelings have been fully processed and neutralized, it actually weakens us to hold on to labels that confine us to that victim role. Feminism is for the oppressed. It is a necessary reaction to trauma, a transition phase between patriarchal brainwashing, and liberation. But we are not meant to live in the transition phase. While initially beneficial, I eventually found that feminism tethered me to the maimed masculinity I sought to escape. In revolt, I began to embody the very toxic masculinity that wounded me in the first place. This blocked me from discovering men who embodied true masculinity and kept me waiting on the ones who would never understand and never change. It fueled a fire of rage I simply didn't need anymore to be powerful. Feminism insists I can do everything a man can do, but why is that the standard for having value? There comes a time when every woman must graduate from identifying herself in relation to men. Isn't that what feminism was supposed to do in the first place? There comes a time for every woman to graduate from the maiden phase cut her losses, take out the garbage, and enter into the next phase, and the next one, without shame, without fear, and without Botox injections. Your body is not your power. Feminism is not your power. Being like a man is not your power. Let us take pride in what we actually are, who we were from the beginning, before society pigeonholed us into being the watered-down maiden.